You're listening to the Get the Pancake Podcast, helping volleyball coaches have their best season yet. Hi coaches, this is Whitney from the Get the Pancake Podcast, a podcast for volleyball coaches. Before we get into the topic for today, I just have to tell you guys that I love power volleyball. I love aggressive smackdowns <laughs> during rallies and during matches, and I don't think that I'm alone there. It's very exciting to see our players go up you know, and smash the ball down or go back to serve and send the ball over with a lot of pace. But volleyball is not just about power. In fact, I think if that's what we're focusing on as coaches with our teams, we're missing out on a big element of volleyball that can help you not only score points, but also really get into the head of your opponent, which who doesn't love to do that? I know that's a little mean. It, it is a little mean, but that's what it is. It's so great to have the other team just looking confused because you are just dominating the court, let's be honest. And the way that we do that is through finesse, which is the topic of this week's episode. So when I'm talking about finesse, what do I mean? Finesse is when we are carefully in a controlled manner, placing the ball in a certain spot on the court. That's purposeful, it is deliberate, and it's usually deceitful as well, especially in volleyball. So let me give you an example of finesse in action. And I'm going to take you back in time with me to when I was coaching a 16 and under team in the Chicagoland area. And this team, I, I loved them. I love all of my teams, but this team was a very short 16 and under team, which is definitely a challenge. As players get older, a lack of height can make it very difficult to compete. But this team, I remember it vividly. We were at a tournament and you know we had been playing at about our average level nothing special um, still going out getting the job done this was a pretty skilled team even though they had a lack of height as a big disadvantage we won more often than we lost but there was this one just beautiful fantastic game where it was like we could do nothing wrong we were on fire the entire set and since experiencing this, I have been striving to get back to that um, because, like I mentioned, it was just beautiful volleyball. And what stands out in my mind in that set is that my team really used their power, but they also placed the ball where the other team wasn't and showed a lot of finesse and control. And they just took control of the game. It, it was great. And what they were doing during the match, let me explain it to you. Let's say the first ball over gets set to our outside hitter. She goes up and smashes it down. That's pretty common in volleyball. Nothing too out of, out of character there for any team. And then it gets set to my middle and my middle sees an opening and tips it hard down the net to her right side. Kill. It came from a tip, but it's a kill. We get the point. And then like we have a couple more classic set nice and high and a power attack. But then my setter who was running a 5-1, she was very skilled, um, would have a dump or get a kill by jumping up to attack the ball. We had some back row attacks that were successful. And even going back to that outside hitter, she had a couple of balls where she didn't swing all out. It was more of maybe 75% swing, but there was control and it went into the right place. So it was away from their defenders. And what was so great about the way that they played during this set is that they were in complete control. And as I mentioned in the beginning of this episode is that it really got into the heads of our opponent. Not that I want the other team to be yelling at each other and getting mad at each other, but that's what was happening and I'm gonna take advantage of that. 
So this episode is all about sharing ways that we can use finesse in volleyball when there's a good opportunity to use that control. And then at the end, I'll share a drill that's on getthepancake.com. That way, if you want to work on using more finesse in practice, in games, uh, you have a way to start to introduce that skill because a lot of these things we don't actually take the time to teach or work on. We spend so much time working on, you know, how to serve harder, how to hit harder. But if we took the time to teach our players how to have more finesse in different situations, they would have a lot more options and a lot more tools to use during matches and they could be more successful. Let's start with serving. Now, you might be thinking, how do you use finesse in serving? Because finesse is often associated with, you know, just a light touch. And we still need power to get the ball over, of course. But when we're serving, we can use short, deliberate serves as an advantage, especially because it's very rare to see a team take advantage of short serves. There are plenty of reasons for this, of course. Um, It is a riskier serve there's less room for error if you put a little too much into it then it goes directly to someone in serve receive typically and if you don't put enough into it then it's going into the net and that seems like a waste of an opportunity however if you have players on your team who already sort of have a short serve in their arsenal um, and you can develop that, that can change the course of a game. Especially when you look at the typical serve-receive lineup, there aren't always people in those short areas. So especially if you can drop it into the middle there, that's a pretty common spot on the court that's open. Let's say that the other team's outside hitter, for example, is they're a stud and they're back in serve-receive, but you can sort of drop the ball in front of them and pull them out of their preparation. That way they're not as effective when it's time for that team to hit. You're giving yourself a better chance to get control of the next ball and uh, return it and possibly get a kill there. There are definitely a lot of advantages to serving short and having that finesse and control over the ball. This is going to be a float serve pretty much every time because all you have to do is just toss it up and pop it. I love short serves. It's actually my go-to serve. Uh, So maybe I'm a little biased here, but when you can pull people out of what they're used to practicing against, then you're creating a little more chaos over there and giving your team a better chance of keeping the serve and of course scoring more points, which is what we all want to do. Your whole team doesn't need to master the short serve by any means. If you can have a couple of players who are capable of really using that short serve in an effective manner, let me just say you'll probably be happy you did that. (laughs) Um, Okay, moving on. After serving, we have passing. There's not a whole lot of room for finesse in passing, in my opinion. Really, the only time that we can, quote unquote, finesse, The pass is just when we're receiving like a nice, easy free ball and we want to make sure that we're not putting too much into it. We're not overpassing. Um, But this is a great opportunity, especially if our setter is where they're supposed to be. If they've transitioned into that setter spot, then they're going to be ready. And hopefully, depending on what age or what level you're coaching, that might be a great time to try and run a play, especially when I'm coaching my 13, 14 year old kids, this is when I'm like, okay, let's, you know, run a one and your team might be more or less advanced. I don't know. This is just an example. Okay. So a free ball is usually when you're introducing plays, you want them to try to run a play off of a free ball. That's a pretty normal introduction of running plays is off of a free ball. So this is when you want your passers to make sure that that ball is going exactly where it needs to keeping the height low so that the setter has an easier time to handle the ball and you're speeding up the offense as well. So that's not a a lot of finesse in passing, but um, making sure that your team can handle a free ball accurately is probably how we can use finesse in passing. Okay, so moving on to setting next. There is a lot of opportunity for finesse with our setters. In fact, almost all of setting is finesse. You know, you have to be very controlled. Just the slightest change in form impacts where the ball goes. So a way to 
work on finesse and developing that finesse with your setters is to introduce plays if you're not already running them and if your team of course is at a level where they can handle a play so running a quick in the middle and if you're not sure what i mean by a quick to the middle that's just essentially the set is just slightly higher than the net and the middle will begin their approach before the ball is even in the setter's hands and the hitter is basically just waiting for the ball up in the air and the setter just places it right where it needs to be so that's a quick because it is attacked quickly and um, there's also a shoot set to the outside that you might want to try which is basically a quick but for outside so it has to travel a further distance there are a lot of plays <laughs> that you can run but starting to introduce some of those to your setter, to your hitters, one, it's going to be super fun for them because they're going to think that they're sneaky. They're going to think that they're doing something super advanced, which they are if, you know, they're just starting to learn plays. And if they pull it off in a game, they're going to be super excited. So plays are really fun. That's a great way to introduce some more finesse work to your setter. I also want to mention the option to dump the ball which is when the setter appears as if they are going to set the ball but then either tips it with one hand or two this is especially effective with a front row setter because they're able to jump and execute the dump but a back row setter can do it as well they just need to be contacting the ball below the height of the net whether they're jumping or not but if you just keep them on the ground that's usually easier for refs to officiate especially at the lower levels but teaching your setter how to dump the ball where to place the ball when they do that uh, maybe different situations when they might dump the ball because if they place it just perfectly it will work probably nine times out of ten as long as they're not doing it too often again younger ages that's mostly where i coach so that's what i'm talking about and also making sure that they're not doing it too frequently and making their hitters mad because hitters want nothing more than to hit the ball so if the setter's taking the ball and keeping it for themselves especially if it's not working they're gonna have some angry hitters on their team setting is basically all finesse but work on advancing your setter to sort of increase how they can use that natural skill that they possess finally i want to talk about hitting probably the most obvious area where we can use finesse in volleyball especially contrasted with the amount of power that we can generate is when we're tipping or using a roll shot or a chip which is where we're sort of half swinging at the ball it's just a quick strike on the ball typically with first an upward motion and then it drops quickly there's a lot of top spin on the ball that's great to kind of get it up and over a block but still land behind the blockers or even just place the ball if you're not able to jump because you need to just go up and over the net and then drop into a deep corner or somewhere knowing how to use a tip especially knowing when to use it where to go this is probably one of the most overlooked skills for our attackers because we're just constantly trying to get our players to hit the ball harder and that's it <laughs> but we can get points just as easily sometimes even easier if we just tip the ball where they're not or chip the ball where they can't get to it and this is one of my favorite ways to frustrate the other team because if they have no clue where you are going to hit the ball especially if you can sell the fake so if you bring your hand up and your outside hitter for example looks like they're ready to smack the ball and then they change their swing just as they're making contact and they tip it around the block that is going to frustrate teams so much it will infuriate the coach <laughs> and i'm sorry for any teams and players who are on the receiving end of this advice um i i really apologize because it is very frustrating when you see your team not able to handle a wide variety of attacks coming from the other team and when you realize that you haven't taught your team how to deal with tips and chips because you've been focused on just smashing the ball harder and harder in practice that's very frustrating for a coach that's when coaches lose their patience that's when your opponents start to fall apart and point fingers at each other and get mad at each other for not getting the ball 
arguing with, well, whose ball is that? It's not mine. It should be yours. You know, that's not a fun part of volleyball necessarily, but it is part of the game. And if you have your opponent acting in that manner, you are in control 100%. So I mentioned that I have a drill that works on finesse specifically when you are hitting and it's called mix it up. I will include links to that drill. It's sort of a mega drill. You can spend a lot of time running it either in one day or you can do it over two days. Um, But it's just a lot of progressions and learning how to use different attacks, when to use them and then actually using them in game situations, which is the most important way to practice any skill because if you can practice it in practice as if you were doing it in a game, then when it's game time, it's just second nature. Also, before I let you go, go and check out the products on getthepancake.com. Those were all created with coaches in mind, trying to give you a more organized season, save you time, There are tryout forms, goal setting worksheets. I just put out a new coaching journal, which has um, a place to plan practice and track attendance, review the practice. One of my favorite parts is also a place to track discipline because those are things that we often forget to track and we don't have that information when we need it. Um, So we can start to recognize discipline patterns as well. And there's a lot more in the coaching journal Again, it's on getthepancake.com, go to products. It will be there for you to read more about what's inside. And I really hope that this episode convinced you to spend at least a little bit of time on tipping, chipping, working on short serves, maybe introducing plays if you're not already running them and it's appropriate for your team's level. Don't just focus on smashing. (laughs) As fun as it is, if we can mix it up and introduce more options, our team is going to be better prepared for more situations. And if they really light on fire, like my 16U team that I was talking about in the beginning of this episode, they can just completely control the match. And that does wonders for self-esteem and momentum moving through the rest of the match or the rest of the tournament and even the rest of the season. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Get the Pancake podcast. And I hope to have you back next week. Mm-hmm.